Welcome to episode 12 of the Alex Nunemaker Mortgage Podcast for the week of August 29th, 2022. In market news, let's do a quick check-in on mortgage rates. Uh, 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 the fuck? Yeah, you said it. Right now, mortgage rates have been taking a beating over the last couple weeks. Uh, on Friday last week, Jerome Powell, head of the Federal Reserve, spoke at Jackson Hole, and he was unusually short and to the point in just an eight-minute speech where he said that he anticipates pain in the U.S. economy in the future, essentially acknowledging that the Fed is in a very tough spot right now. This has set off a lot of alarms in the market. He pointed to the slow actions of the Fed in the 1970s that led to prolonged inflation in the 1980s, essentially saying if they don't act decisively right now and acknowledge that there's going to be some pain in the job growth uh, sector, that it's just going to prolong the inevitable. So he said the put, Fed puts inflation at its top priority to tame. And so the painting he's speaking of is neglecting growth in the economy in order to put that inflation genie back in the bottle. Now, this has been pushing the 10-year Treasury yield up, which heavily impacts mortgage rates. So if the yield on the 10-year Treasury goes up, the, ho- the holders of mortgage-backed securities say, hey, I'm in a riskier investment, so they are demanding a greater return, which has pushed up mortgage-backed securities and mortgage rates. Fun stuff, right? Now, the good news, many of you experienced this firsthand for your buyers, buyers who maybe were on the sidelines the last two years, and they now have a fighting shot. We're seeing more and more buyers go under contract on their first, second, third time out, not having to put offers on 10 to 15 homes. They can target sellers who, you know, they thought that prices were just on a straight line up. So if someone sold a home for 500, they should be able to sell their home for 525. Well, now they're seeing their home sitting for a little bit longer and your buyers can scoop those up. In Mortgage Corner, let's talk about something that has the potential to be dark, but it really doesn't have to be. And it's really just about good advice. Uh, Unfortunately, recently I've seen friends that have had to deal with the death of a loved one much too early. Uh, They're a primary wage earner. And this hits home for me, especially for those of you who know my story. My dad passed away when I was nine, and that left my mom to care for me and my three siblings on her own. So while this was, there was life insurance, it wasn't enough, and there certainly wasn't a plan. It was just a big bucket of money with no plan. And our family, within a short amount of time, had burned through those funds, struggled for years until ultimately my mom fell victim to a predatory mortgage lender. And that loan officer went to jail, but the damage was already done and we lost the house that my mom and dad bought together in the 1980s. So why do I bring this up? Many of your clients will get inundated with junk mail and offers after settlement. And one of the common pieces of mail they'll get is for something called mortgage payoff insurance. Now, I'm not gonna call this a scam because it's not. You know, The basic idea behind this is that if someone on the mortgage passes away, this insurance policy will pay off most or all of the mortgage. And this is obviously appealing because the mortgage for most people and households is the big, biggest expense that they have. It is legitimate. Those payoffs will you know, happen and there are companies out there that offer this. However, the cost of these programs is usually the same or more expensive than a good comprehensive life insurance policy that can cover much more than the mortgage. So in many cases, you can get a good term life insurance policy for cheaper that can pay off the mortgage and also set aside lost wages for other expenses down the road like college savings. So these conversations don't always come up. Sometimes they just get something in the mail, they'll text either me as the mortgage lender or you as the realtor. But if your client does ask about this, my recommendation is just put them in touch with a good financial planner who can talk about those long-term financial goals. Set something up in case the worst case scenario does happen. I know it because I lived it. This brings us to my quote of the week from Benjamin Franklin. If you fail to plan, you are planning to fail. Have a great week, and if I can help you or any of your clients with any questions or pre-approvals, let me know. They can visit me at homeloanswithalex.com. Have a great week.